Hi, in this short video, we're going to introduce the notion of differential equations and different ways we can classify them. So a differential equation is an equation which contains derivatives. We abbreviate differential equation by just saying DE. Now we can classify differential equations using different characteristics. For example, their type, their order, and whether they are linear or nonlinear. What do we mean by type? Well, if you have an equation which has derivatives of functions which depend on only one variable, we call that an ordinary differential equation, or ODE. On the other hand, if the equation contains functions which depend on two or more variables, and they have partial derivatives of those functions, we call that a partial differential equation. Now, maybe you have not had a course in multivariable calculus, so you're not sure what we mean by partial differential, well, or partial derivative. So let's just do a quick review. We don't need to know all of the information about partial derivatives in this course, but we should understand how to write down a partial derivative and how to calculate a partial derivative. So if I have a function, say f of x comma y equals x squared plus 2xy plus y times sine of x, we can see it depends on two variables. It has two independent variables, x and y. So there's no real notion of being able to differentiate with respect to both variables simultaneously. So we do it one variable at a time, and that's why it's called a partial derivative. You're only differentiating with respect to one variable at a time. The way we write the partial derivative, there's many different ways, but the ways that we will see is something that looks like df by dx, but instead of the d, we have this new symbol, which is called the partial. So we have the partial of f with respect to x. Or a simpler way of writing it would be just f with the subscript x. That is another way of indicating the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Well, how do we calculate that partial derivative? Well, we just treat anything with y. We treat the y as a constant, as if it were 10 or k. Just treat it as a constant and then differentiate with respect to x. So in our first term, x squared, we differentiate x squared with respect to x, we'll get 2x. In the second term, 2xy, y is being treated as a constant. So we could actually think of this as 2y times x. Well, the derivative of x is just 1. 2y is a multipli multiplicative constant. And so we're going to be left with 2y. And in the final term, we have uh, y times sine of x. And so uh, y is a constant. And then we'll take the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x. The partial derivative with respect to y has a very similar idea, very similar notation. In this case, we'll take the partial of f with respect to y. So the y in the denominator tells us we must differentiate with respect to y. Or again, we could just write the name of the function f with a subscript y. What do we do 
to calculate the partial derivative of f with respect to y. We're going to treat x as a constant this time and differentiate with respect to y. Well, our first term is x squared. So if x is a constant, we treat x squared as a constant and the derivative of x squared with respect to y would be 0. In the second term, again, we're treating x as a constant, so 2x would be the coefficient on y. The partial derivative of y with respect to y is just 1, and so I'm left with 2x times 1, or 2x. And in the last term, again, x we treat as a constant, so sine x we treat as a constant as well. So we're just left with the derivative of y with respect to y, which is 1 times sine x, so I get sine x. In this class, we're going to work mostly with ODEs. And here are some examples. Here we have uh, a different ODE with a first derivative. Here there's a second derivative. And notice that normally we like to use this Leibniz notation where we have the dy by dt or d squared y by dx squared. And the reason is that when we have the prime, we're not really sure what the dependent variable is and what the independent variable. In this second equation, it's clear that x is the independent variable. We're taking the derivative with respect to x. But in our last equation, x is an independent variable. We're taking the derivative of x with respect to t. We're also taking the derivative of y with respect to t. So here I have only one independent variable t, but two dependent variables x and y. So really there's two unknown functions. Both of them are functions of t. Here are some examples of partial differential equations. We're not going to be studying partial differential equations, but we may see them occasionally throughout the course. In this case, then, it appears that y is a function of both t and x. And here, in the second example, I only have the first partial derivatives, and it appears that u and v are both functions of x and y. The next concept, the order of a DE, is very simple. It's just the highest derivative in the equation. So if I look at this differential equation here, the first term, d squared y over dx squared, that's a second order term. It's the second derivative. The next term, I take the first derivative raise it to the power of 4, and then multiply it by 3. And uh, But that's still a first-order term. It's still just a first derivative. That's what matters when we're talking about order. It doesn't matter what happens afterward, whether you leave it by itself or you raise it to the power of 4 or take the square root of it. It's still a first-order term. So this would be a second-order differential equation. So here are some examples of first order differential equations. They only contain first derivatives. Here are some second order differential equations. And we do use the prime notation sometimes when it's very clear what the independent variable is. In this case, it would be x. And both of these are second order differential equations because they contain second derivatives and no other higher derivatives. There's multiple ways of writing uh, differential equations. And in some cases, it's useful to write it in differential form. Well, what does that mean? Well, we look at this dy by dx as being a fraction of differentials 
we go ahead and multiply through by the dx and we'll have an equation m, which depends on x and y, that'll be multiplied by the differential dx, a different equation n, depending on x and y, that gets multiplied by the differential dy, and their sum equals zero. So for example, after I multiply through by dx, dx is going to be multiplied by the group. So in parentheses, 2x plus 3y, dy is multiplied by e to the x sine y, and the whole sum equals 0. And that's what we call differential form. Normal form is another way of writing a de. And the idea is simple. You just want to solve for the highest order differential term uh, or the term that has the highest derivative. So we want it by itself with a coefficient of 1. So in our example here, we're going to solve for the third derivative term. So we'll have all of the other terms on the right-hand side, and we'll divide through by the coefficient which in this case is x. That's what we call normal form. Our last way of classifying differential equations is to determine if they are linear or not. And in our case, there's two conditions. We want the y and all of its derivatives to be linear. What does that mean? That means that uh, they are not squared. You don't take the square root of it. It's not on the inside of any other type of function, like inside an exponential function or a trig function. They're just simply just by themselves and uh, raised to the first power. And the second condition is that all of the coefficients on those, on y and its derivatives, depend at most on the dependent variable x. So you can't have a coefficient which depends on y or x and y. So to clarify, if I have a linear first order DE, the coefficient on the first derivative can be a function of x, but x only. It may just be a constant. It may just be 1. Those are all fine, but it can't have any y's in its coefficient. And the same thing with the coefficient on y. And finally, the, in a way, constant function here. It's not really constant. The function that's mul not multiplied by any y or its derivatives, that should depend on x only. And same idea with the second order. You can have coefficient functions on y and its derivatives but they can be constants or they can depend on x only. So let's look at some examples. This is a linear differential equation. It's written in that differential form. And so it may not be clear the way it's written that it's actually linear. So we can go ahead and rewrite it uh, by using derivatives here instead of differentials. We just divide through by the dx. And now we can see that the derivative term, the first derivative term, has a coefficient, but it depends on x only. It's 4x. And then the y is not squared or taking the square root of, uh, and it has a constant coefficient. Again, in this second order differential equation, the coefficients are all constants and all of the terms are linear. And in this third example, we have coefficients which are not constants, but they only depend on x. Let's look at some nonlinear differential equations. Why is this differential equation nonlinear? It's first order. Certainly, we don't have to worry about the y. It's just 3y. But over here, 
on the y prime, we have a coefficient which depends on y. That makes it a nonlinear differential equation. What about this second example? It's a second order differential equation. The coefficient on the second derivative is just one, but look at where the y is. The y is in the exponential. It, that is a nonlinear function of y, which makes this a nonlinear differential equation. So in summary, we've learned what a differential equation is. It's an equation with derivatives. If the functions inside the differential equation only depend on one variable, we call it an ordinary differential equation. On the other hand, if you have partial derivatives, then that's a partial differential equation. The order of a differential equation is simply the highest derivative. And when a differential equation is linear, the dependent variable and all of its derivatives uh, must be linear and the coefficients can depend at most on the independent variable. So I hope this clarifies some of the basic definitions for differential equations and you'll be ready to learn more in the next videos.